Time now for Focus, and today we're looking at Donald Trump's ban on transgender troops in the U.S. military. He made the announcement on Twitter in July, citing medical costs and disruption. It blindsided many in the military. Last month, a federal judge temporarily blocked the policy, a ruling seen as encouraging for supporters. Gallagher Fenwick sent us this report. Following a presidential tweet, all transgender U.S. Army personnel risk losing their jobs. According to studies, their number lies somewhere between 5,000 and 15,000. Donald Trump wants to ban them from serving. Are you always ready for a fight? <sighs> you know, I always seem to pick the hopeless ones, but yes. <laughs> all right. Fight for chivalry, fight for honor, fight for tacos. Tacos. Bryn Tanhill retired from the Navy before transitioning from male to female. Her gender identity does not match her sex at birth. She says the armed services would be wrong to focus on that instead of her skills and those of her transgender colleagues. They prove themselves over and over again that they can't deploy, that they will deploy, that they can perform at the highest levels across all aspects of the service. And I would say that, based off of what I'm doing here, that uh, the fighting spirit is definitely there. You have to stay alive first. Defend yourself first. Then when the opening comes, hit it. Gotcha. A knight standing by agrees to share with us his thoughts about Bryn. Bryn fights like a fighter. You know, I, I don't have this concept of those are girl fighters and those are guy fighters. They're just fighters. And they can be good or terrible. Is there, you know, their, their equipment underneath is irrelevant. Gender identity has nothing to do with one's ability to fight. That is Brief Ram's opinion. How cool is that? A year ago, she came out to her colleagues at the Pentagon. She told them she is gender fluid, both man and woman. At the time, President Obama allowed transgender individuals to openly serve. Brie recalls how she felt on reading Donald Trump's tweet, rescinding that decision. There in Colorado, it was uh, like a thunderbolt when the president said he had consulted with his generals, and this has been works in the works. No one knew where that was coming from. We don't know what has happened or why this came out of, out of thin air to us. At work, Bree becomes on. Brian. Just the male half of the wardrobe and the female half of the wardrobe. Brian is convinced that having a dual identity actually adds to combat readiness. It gives him the ability to look at things from different perspectives. He jokes about being an expert in risk management because of who he is and public perception. For now, though, he has to go back to proving his professionalism and his willingness to serve. Our worth is in what we do every day for the country and to fight that instinct that others might have to throw us out, not for what we do or what we can do in the future, but for who we are, uh, it's a very difficult fight to have to face. The end of the open transgender policy could potentially thrust Brian and others back into the shadows. They are up against powerful organizations on the other side of this issue. The Family Research Council hosts writers like Peter Sprigg. Some of his theories made it to the current White House. He asserts that the cost of hormone therapy for transgender service members is a financial burden. He also has other arguments against the presence of people like Brian in the military. We would be putting women in situations where we, they would have to share living quarters, uh, restrooms, showers, and locker rooms with people who are biologically male. Uh, in s many cases, people who still have male genitalia. Matt Thorne heads a legal services organization for the LGBT community in the military. He says there is no proof that transgender persons have a negative impact on the force. He states that their medical expenses 
are in fact low compared with the overall defense budget. Kicking out these individuals would therefore be both unrealistic and unpatriotic. If we get rid of 15,000 individuals, we have to replace them with other individuals. So who do, you, who do you expect is going to take those jobs? These are capable individuals who meet the standards that we've put forward as a military, who want to serve and potentially put their life on the line to serve and defend this country. Why are we having this? I mean, really, at the end of the day, why are we having this discussion? Critics believe that Donald Trump's controversial decision is meant to please his religious base. For now, the Pentagon is no longer hiring transgender individuals. It has until March 2018 to make a recommendation as to the fate of those currently in its ranks. For more on this, I'm now joined by Nicolas Gachon, a U.S. politics expert who teaches in the southern French city of Montpellier. Hello. Thank you very much for being with us. So Donald Trump then doesn't want transgender troops in the U.S. military. But didn't he say during the campaign Hello. that he would look out for the LGBT community? Well, exactly, and that tells you how malleable Donald Trump's position can be. During the, campaign, during the campaign, he did say that he would make every effort to protect the rights of LGBT people and then changed his mind shortly after his inauguration in, in February. And this was quite unsurprising, by the way, because um, being associated with people like Mike Pence as vice president or Jeff Sessions as attorney general tells you that probably he was going to change his mind. And this is a very political decision. This is a message sent to his conservative and possibly religious base, as was mentioned in your document. How much opposition has there been to this from within his own Republican Party? Well, it's a very useful debate for the Republican Party because it's a very a highly divisive issue. You have about 60 percent of the Republicans in the United States who believe that too much has been done for transgender people and about 60 percent of Democrats who think exactly the, the, the opposite. So this is like reigniting the culture wars of the 1990s. It's a very useful tool and it is a typical conservative um, speech, uh, message, tone that was used in the past to keep women and colored people and gay people from serving in, 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 in the military. So this is very a very political message and Trump has a tendency for self-sabotage in fact because the what is happening now does not have so much to do it, it, it's really the tweets that, that, that were issued in July of, 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 during the summer that raised an issue. Um, and as you know the, 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 the a uh, district judge has halted um, the, the decision for now. I was going to ask you about that. Uh, a federal judge temporarily blocking the policy, as we've seen before, for example, with Donald Trump's travel bans. What does it mean exactly? And, and, and uh, in our report, we hear about March 2018. What are we expecting to hear then? And what does a federal judge interfering uh, have to do with that? Well, it's very simple. For now, it's a preliminary injunction. It's The message is very simple. It means that, no, Donald Trump cannot apply this ban for now, as is, okay? A number of, uh, a number of people, of transgender people, have, um, have sued Donald Trump, so there's an, 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 an ongoing process. And uh, the, the, the Trump administration has about 60 days now, after the decision of the Supreme Court, to, to try to appeal that decision or otherwise a decision will have to be made by March 2018 by the Pentagon. But it's a very difficult and tense situation at that moment. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed, Nicolas Gachon, for joining us from Montpellier. And uh, apologies for that uh, slight delay there. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. I'll be back at the top of the hour.